Welcome to iSeahorse Trends. In this course, you will learn how to establish a seahorse monitoring program, including learning about seahorse biology and species identification, selecting a suitable survey site, collecting data on seahorses, and sending monitoring data to iSeahorse. Let's get started. Seahorses are cute, funny-looking fishes that don't look like other fishes. Many people recognize and love seahorses making them good representatives for marine conservation and the habitats that they live in. Seahorses belong to the family Cygnathidae, or fishes with fused jaws. Other fishes in this family include the pipe fishes, sea dragons, and pipe horses. Seahorses can't open and close their jaws like other fishes to snap up food and can only eat what they can suck in through their narrow mouth parts. Imagine if you could only eat through a straw, and you get the idea. Seahorses eat very small food items like zooplankton, small shrimp, and fish larvae. How do you tell a seahorse from a pipefish or a pipe horse? They look similar, but seahorses swim in an upright position, while pipefishes and pipe horses have relatively straight bodies that are oriented in a horizontal position. The seahorse head is also bent almost 90 degrees to the rest of its body. Seahorses have a flexible tail that can curl around objects for support, and you often find them hanging on to such a structure, called a holdfast, on the sea bottom. Seahorses are found in a variety of marine habitats around the world. Not only in tropical waters, but also in temperate areas as far north as Ireland and Canada, and as far south as South Africa. It would be amazing if seahorses grew to the size of small ponies, because they would be easy to find and study. Sadly, this is not a real photo. In real life, the two largest seahorse species grow to about 30 to 35 centimeters in height, which we measure from the top of the head to the tip of the tail. These are the big-bellied seahorse, found in waters off Australia, and the Kellogg's seahorse, found in the Indo-Pacific. Kellogg's seahorses can usually be found living in waters deeper than 30 meters. On the other end of the scale are the tiny seahorses, the pygmy seahorses. These are barely two centimeters in height when full-grown. The Bargabant's pygmy seahorse from Southeast Asia is associated with a specific sea fan and even has bumps on its body to mimic the sea fan. There are also free living seahorses not associated with specific habitats, like Ponto's pygmy seahorse recently described as a species from Indonesia. Seahorses swim slowly, too slowly to escape predators. So to protect themselves, seahorses have to be very good at hiding. How many seahorses can you see here? Some species of seahorses mate for life and also share a special pair bond. Once two seahorses form a mating pair, the female visits the male seahorse every morning. They curl their tails around each other's and do a little courtship dance to reinforce their pair bond. They can also change color to communicate with each other. Another characteristic of seahorses is that the males get pregnant, not the females. Male pregnancy is unique to members of the seahorse family. The female deposits eggs into a special brood pouch on the male's belly, and the male releases sperm inside the pouch to fertilize the eggs. It's similar to a female pregnancy in that the male regulates the environment within the brood pouch by providing food and oxygen and removing waste products. Seahorses live in important marine ecosystems, seagrass beds, coral reefs, mangroves, and estuaries that provide millions of dollars in goods and services to people who live near coasts. Unfortunately, these habitats are under threat from human activities such as blast fishing, coastal development, conversion of mangrove forests to aquaculture ponds, and bottom trawling which scours the sea bottom, removing everything in the net's path. Seahorses themselves are also under threat. Official records show that millions of seahorses were sold every year from 2004 through 2011. 
more than 90% of these seahorses were sold as dried products, mostly for the traditional medicine trade and also for souvenirs and curios. Seahorses are also sold alive for the aquarium trade, but at much smaller volumes than the dried seahorse trade. On top of the heavy trade, seahorses are vulnerable to overfishing for several other reasons. They have a small home range and are therefore affected by any negative impacts that may occur nearby. In addition, they are slow swimmers and cannot easily escape trawling nets. As mentioned before, many species mate for life. So if one mate gets caught, the surviving seahorse would need some time to find another mate, delaying reproduction, which already occurs at low rates for seahorse species. We know, however, that the seahorse trade is an important source of income to coastal communities, especially those in impoverished areas. Therefore, we are not looking to shut down the trade, but to find ways to manage it in a sustainable manner. When we talk about the seahorse trade, you might think of fishers going out to sea to specifically catch seahorses. But most seahorses are caught accidentally, commonly referred to as bycatch. In bottom trawling, anything larger than the mesh size of the net will be caught and brought up to the surface. For example, more than 80% of seahorses exported from Thailand come from shrimp trawl bycatch. Even if the seahorse trade were to shut down completely tomorrow, seahorses will still be caught and killed in trawling nets. So if we really want to help seahorses, we need to support ways to make trawling and other fishing methods more sustainable. Because seahorses are so heavily traded, they are regarded as species of conservation concern. According to the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species, there are species listed as endangered and vulnerable to extinction. But more species are known as data deficient. The data deficient listing means we don't know enough about these species to even assess their conservation status. A number of species on the red list have not been assessed as well. The export of seahorses is also regulated by CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. Seahorses are listed on Appendix 2 of CITES, meaning that countries that want to export seahorses have to ensure that the trade does not harm wild populations. With so many species listed as data deficient, however, it is difficult to ascertain if seahorse trade in exporting countries is properly managed. So, why seahorses? Well, seahorses live in important marine habitats with high biodiversity, and we are interested in what happens to these areas and the animals that live there. Seahorses are also traded at very high volumes, but we don't know much about their biology and ecology. This information is needed to manage trade sustainably and conserve seahorses. For countries that export seahorses, this basic biological information is required to assess catch impacts on wild populations to meet CITES export requirements. Earlier, I mentioned that seahorses can be found in tropical and temperate waters worldwide. And as you can see from this map, seahorses can be found over a huge marine area. You can imagine that it would take a small scientific team decades to survey this entire area, but we need the data much more urgently than that. So the big question is, how can we survey the whole world for seahorses? The answer lies in people like you, citizen scientists. You don't need a science degree to contribute data for research and conservation. In fact, thousands of people are already collecting information on seahorses. They are taking photos of seahorses, recording information about the marine habitat in their dive log books, and writing blog posts about seahorses. What we need is a way to bring all this information together in one place. You might ask, what exactly can citizen scientists do? As it turns out, a lot. For example, the combined efforts of thousands of bird watchers around the world has led to the creation of this global map of endangered and vulnerable bird species. 
With this information, we can identify conservation hotspots, places with high numbers of critically endangered species, and direct conservation efforts there. Data collected by citizen scientists have helped direct policy at the government level, facilitated conservation efforts at the community level, and contributed directly to scientific research. This brings us to our citizen science program for seahorses, iSeahorse. iSeahorse can be accessed online at www.iseahorse.org or as a free iPhone app you can download from the iTunes store. On iSeahorse, you can record sightings of any seahorses you encounter in the wild and find resources to learn more about seahorses. iSeahorse is a partnership between Project Seahorse, based at the University of British Columbia and the Zoological Society of London, and Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, Illinois, in the United States. When we teach and promote iSeahorse in other countries, we also reach out to and work with a variety of local partners, from government agencies to conservation groups. Over here, we have the user interface of iSeahorse. When you see a seahorse, you can click on the Add Observation tab to add your sighting. You can also see what others have posted about seahorses recently. When you go to the Explore Seahorses tab, you'll see a map with everyone's sightings to date. You can zoom in to an area of interest on the map and click on Individual Observations to find out more about the seahorse and its habitat. On iSeahorse, you can also upload photographs to accompany your sightings and share information with other iSeahorse users by commenting on their observations. Using your sightings, we can eventually create a complete distribution map for each seahorse species in the world. The aims of iSeahorse are to collect data on wild seahorses from around the world and then to share these data through our seahorse distribution maps. Mostly, we want to increase the number of people taking action for seahorses and their marine habitats. So we don't just want to tell people about the threats that seahorses and the marine environment face. We also want to give them the information to do something about it. When you see a seahorse and record that information on iSeahorse, we call that a sighting. You can also follow a group of seahorses over time observing whether this group of seahorses is increasing in number, decreasing, or remaining stable. Long-term monitoring at one site allows us to examine trends in a specific population's size and distribution, which is the focus of our IC Horse Trends program, what this course is all about. What can we do with trends data? You can link population trends to what is happening in the area. For example, if seahorse numbers are declining as a construction project starts nearby, the decrease in seahorse numbers could be correlated with the construction activities. If you know an area that supports healthy seahorse populations is important for seahorse breeding or is under stress, you can use this information to take action and prioritize these areas for conservation. Do check out the Taking Action tab on the iSeahorse homepage for more ideas on what you can do. Overall, the IC Horse Trends program is about capacity building, giving people the tools they need to take care of their own natural resources. In this course, you'll be introduced to the IC Horse Trends Toolkit, which trains citizen scientists such as yourself in seahorse survey techniques. You can find the entire toolkit on the IC Horse Trends website. The IC Horse Trends survey method is easy to learn and it's designed to integrate into your regular recreational dives. When you are on a fun dive or taking photos, you can count seahorses and collect some simple information at the same time. In other words, conduct your own seahorse survey. iSeahorse Trends is something that users can readily adopt while still providing information on seahorse abundance and other population characteristics. I'd like to end the first lecture by encouraging you to be a citizen scientist. You can make a difference for our oceans by joining iSeahorse or telling your friends about iSeahorse.
Using the iSeahorse Trends Toolkit, start a seahorse monitoring program or add seahorses to any marine surveys that you may already do. Finally, feel free to ask questions and get in touch with us by emailing iSeahorse at projectseahorse.org.